So when I started airbrushing kits again at the end of the at the beginning of this year, I wanted to make a spray booth that was kind of disposable because my wife and I are planning to move across the country. So I wanted something that I probably didn't have to take. Uh, so what I did was I just built the actual booth out of some scrap wood I had in my garage, and then I used four 40 millimeter uh, computer fans that I had left over from previous PC builds that were like 60 CFM a piece, and I designed and 3D printed a bracket to hold them. So I figured that would be adequate, but the problem is uh, I have this out in my garage because I have an infant and I don't want to use lacquer paints in the house when I have an infant. And after my last build, which was the uh, Curios Gundam, I noticed uh, when I walked outside to take the garbage out that my car had dust on it and I kind of wiped it off and took a look at it and it was overspray. My whole garage was just filled with overspray. So the fan wasn't good enough. So after doing my typical hours of research before buying something, I came up with this 10 inch exhaust fan, explosion proof exhaust fan. And the reason why I went with this fan is because one, it's 1942 CFM, which is more than adequate for a small spray booth. It's like overkill. And two, because it's explosion proof. So if you didn't know lacquer paints, the fumes, uh, the volatile, solvents are flammable and sometimes electric motors can spark like if you look in the back of a uh, battery operated drill you'll see that sometimes in the vent holes you'll see sparks so technically it can cause at least a fire and possibly an explosion so if you're doing this in your house you should have an explosion proof fan so i see this fan everywhere i see it on ebay i see it on amazon uh, it's listed under a bunch of different brand names. It's just uh, companies white labeling the fan. They probably all buy from the same Chinese factory. I purchased mine from Amazon just because I know Amazon has a pretty hassle-free return policy. I just want to be able to return it quickly if I had to, especially the way this is packaged. There's no protection in the packaging, which you'll see later. One thing to note, though, is that it does not come with a plug. It comes with the wire, but at the end of the wire, they're just loose wires. And they probably do that because they sell this unit all over the world. And they don't want to have separate units to sell in different countries. So you just have to wire it up, which I'll show you guys how to do. The only other thing that's a little bit of annoying with this fan is that the intake side has this big flared out edge that you have to get something over to create a seal. And then also the output side is a little thick too which i used a fitting that i'll show you in the video but it's doable so here's a couple of the other things i used on my setup if you want to copy my setup uh, the first is this coupler uh, flanged coupler which i used for the back of my spray booth and for the board i will put in my window for the exhaust the next thing is this 10 inch coupler which i used to connect the exhaust side of the fan to the exhaust hose so this is the 10 inch exhaust hose that I used to hook up to the last piece. It comes with two 10 inch clamps to hook it up to the couplers. So the intake side of the fan presented a challenge because I didn't want to put a coupler in there and possibly impede the fan blades, nor did I want to take the grill off the front of the fan uh, with the fan blades being so close to the front just as a safety issue. So what I found was this flexible PVC ducting that has this kind of big jacket on the front of it that fits over the flange and then just has some drawstrings that you can pull down to seal it. And I also duct taped around the whole thing once just to make sure the seal was uh, airtight. This was a little cheaper on eBay. So I bought this one on eBay rather than Amazon. It is a little expensive regardless, but I think it's worth it to not have to take the grill off the front of that fan, especially that it's moving like 4,000 RPMs. And if anything gets in there, it's gonna be shredded. If you do have room behind your spray booth though, you can stick the fan intake side directly against the spray booth and not have to have any hose in the front. So that'll work too. Um, I plan to do that when I move, if I have more room, but right now I didn't want to pull my table out any further than it is. And the last thing you'll need if you're copying my setup is one extra 10 inch clamp. The black exhaust hose comes with two clamps. I needed one extra one. So there's this pack for like seven bucks, it's pretty cheap. So here's what it looks like when it got to me. It's not that great a packing job. There's really nothing in there at all to protect it, but it wasn't damaged, so that's not really a big deal. You see, here's what it looks like. It doesn't come with a plug. You can see the wires just hanging there. And that's probably because they sell this fan all over the world and they don't want to have separate units for separate countries. So they just leave the plug off.
but I, I'm going to show you how to wire it up. So you need to attach the coupler for the exhaust, and the first thing you need to do is cut out a relief for the power cable that runs from the switch down to the motor. And then after that, it should seat all the way back. Then you want to grab a marker and, you know, remove, obviously you're going to remove the, the grate before doing this. Um, but you're going to use the marker and mark out the holes where the grate was. Then go ahead and drill out the holes and make sure you're using a bit big enough to accommodate the bolts that you took out of the grate because you're going to be reusing those. And then go ahead and take the nuts and bolts from the grate and use those to secure the flange on. You're not going to be able to fit the grate back onto the fan, but um, being that this is the exhaust and the blades are far away from this opening, I was okay with that. You're also going to have to get some silicone, like whatever silicone you get from a hardware store, and put a nice thick bead between the gap of the uh, coupler and the fan, because you don't want that open and exhaust blowing out and blowing over spray through that gap. Uh, blowing over spray through that gap. So the wire I used to power the fan is just one of these uh, computer wires that usually go into a computer power supply. Um, I'm sure you have one of these around. If not, if you know anybody that builds computers, uh, they probably most likely have a couple of these uh, laying around. So all I did was cut this end off, and which leaves the three wires exposed, and then you just kind of splice it back to connect them to the uh, switch or directly to the fan. All right, so since I have the ventilation fan under my actual work uh, table, I wanted to put a switch on top so I didn't have to keep, you know, reaching back there to turn it on from the power switch on the actual unit. So what I did was I just got this uh, industrial switch from Lowe's, and this is just a regular metal gang box, single, single gang box. And this is how you have to wire this. So on the top here, you're going to see where it says uh, common. And this is where the power source is coming in. So in other words, you're going to use the, uh, the black wire from the plug is going to hook up to the common. Then you're going to hook the blue wire, which is the hot wire from the fan up to either one of these uh, other terminals on the sides here. Doesn't matter which one. I put it on this side. You're going to take the uh, neutral wires, which is the brown wire from the fan and the white wire from the plug, and you're just going to connect those together. And then the two ground wires, you're going to uh, twist together and then just hook, just hook them up to the, uh, the, green, the green screw here. I'll make a diagram so that you guys uh, can look at it when you're installing the switch. So here's a diagram of how to wire the switch. Obviously do not have the plug plugged into the wall and have the lo wires live while you're trying to wire them up. If you don't want to use a switch and you just want to connect it directly, then it's just white to brown, black to blue, and green to green. Again, don't do this if you're not comfortable doing it. All right, so we got my spray booth. We got this 10 inch ducting that goes down the back to the bottom shelf of this table and hooks into the 10 inch fan there and then goes out that black exhaust vent, 10 inch vent, and then out the window. We have the plugged into the wall over here and we hook this plug up to the switch. So you just have to have the switch on the fan on the on position and then now we have it hooked up to this switch. Just turns it on. This is our light switch here. There we go. Start painting. And for the output side, I just used a piece of scrap wood with that flanged. Uh, 10 inch connector. So 
So I'm super happy with this exhaust fan. It works amazingly. I think it's uh, it's 1942 CFM. So it's more than adequate for a small uh, airbrushing spray booth. You can see how strong the suction is there. It's holding up those watts of paper towel. I am gonna start using a lighter filter media because apparently those pano filters, especially the 3M ones can be very restricting according to my HVAC guy. So the time when I get the most overspray is when I am priming because I'm pretty much going on full blast and doing a bunch of pieces all at one time. And in my other setup, I'd actually see the whole spray booth cloud up with paint. And now I don't see any overspray at all. I don't even smell anything. Like I probably don't even have to wear a respirator, which I will obviously wear my respirator, but I'm just saying when I take the respirator off uh, before I smell paint fumes and now I smell nothing. You can see here I'm working on that Anchor T uh, Hack Ushiki conversion kit and I've primed uh, a bunch of parts for this and I waited a little bit after and inspected my garage, my car and everything, and there was no overspray anywhere. So the fan works great. The only downside to the fan is that it's a little bit loud. Um, I believe it's about uh, almost 70 decibels, but it's really not that big a deal considering how well it filters. So I'm not really, not really uh, upset about that. So if you're looking for one of the best spray booth fans, in my opinion, uh, this is it. This is super strong and you definitely something you should have, uh, especially if you're using lacquer paints, being it's explosion proof and it's going to suck all of those fumes out of your workspace and not expose you or your family to them. So everything I use for this setup will be linked below. If you want to support the channel, you can use those links. Do me a favor and hit that like button so this video can reach more people. And consider subscribing if you're into uh, Gunpla or any other scale modeling and airbrushing.